Yo, what's going on guys? This is Bernie again, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about Socket I.O. in real-time messaging. So Socket I.O. uses WebSockets to allow the server to speak with the client directly. The client notifies the server when it wants to send a message to it, and the uh, server is able to receive that message, and vice versa. The server notifies the client when it wants to send a message, and the client will be waiting and be able to execute some sort of function once it gets that message. So let's go ahead and set the server up first because we're gonna have to set the server up and then the client side up. Uh, so we're gonna create a new variable and call it HTTP and it's gonna require uh, the HTTP module. And we're gonna create a new server with it. Uh, and we're gonna give it our app. Uh, so they're basically one and the same. Um, then we're gonna create a new variable and call it IO and require socket.io and then we're going to give it our HTTP server. So in order to get socket.io to work we actually need to use npm to install it so npm install socket.io uh, and we'll go ahead and save that into our package.json file so go ahead and let that install. Okay so now that it's installed let's go ahead and get it set up so we're going to do io.on and then the name of what is actually happening, uh, the event. Um, so on a connection, we're gonna execute this function and it's gonna take in a socket. And then what we're gonna do is set up a socket on and then the event, which is, um, or actually, no, we don't need to do that. Um, we're going to do uh, console.log uh, a user has connected. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take that same socket and do on and give it the event disconnect. So when a user disconnects, we want it to execute this function. Um, console.log uh, a user has disconnected. So let's get that pretty up and we'll save it. So now that we have the server set up, let's set up the client. Uh, we're gonna go to our home.ejs file, which is where we're gonna include all of our partial pages. So this is the main uh, part of the website. And we are going to import a CDN for socket.io. Uh, so I've got the link here. Um, it'll be in the source code. Uh, so this is importing the socket IO to the client side. Okay, so in order to use it with Angular socket.io, we're going to use a module called Angular Socket IO uh, made by BT Ford. So we're gonna go to uh, install it via Bower. So Bower install Angular Socket IO and go ahead and save that to our Bower file and let that install. Okay, so you, now you should see it in your public library angular-socket-io folder. We're gonna use the, the uh, socket.js file. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put that under our core components for Angular. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our, um, let's see, our JS and edit our app to uh, add that is a required module. So let's go ahead and require it. Um, so the name of it is btford.socket.io. And now that is, and we'll save that. So this package actually uh, gives us access to a socket uh, factory. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder here. We're gonna call it services. And inside services, we're going to create a new file, and that's going to be called chatsocket.js, if I can spell. And so in here, we're going to say my app, which is the name of our Angular app, dot .factory. And then we're going to call this uh, service or factory uh, chatsocket. And then chatsocket is going to be injected with the socket factory that's provided by uh, the angular socket IO module so function and then socket factory and then what we can do down here oops 
this was supposed to be oh no I had it right okay so then right here we're gonna all we're gonna do is gonna return uh, the socket factory and so now we can inject this into our controllers so let's go to our controller that's our daily dose controller just make a controller if you're not following this tutorial uh, series um, and we're gonna go up here and we're going to make a new injection and it's going to be our service or our factory chat socket and then we'll add it to our function here chat socket and then uh, we will just save that so let's go to our home.ejs folder and include our chat socket.js file that we've just uh, included in our services here and then also let's go back to our server um, and instead of using app.listen like we would typically for express we're going since we've already included um, uh, it the app into our HTTP server we're going to use the HTTP server to listen to requests which will also allow us to get requests for our normal Express application so it's HTTP.listen give it the port that we're using the same port 8080 uh, and then a function that returns that so we'll go ahead and save that and then let's go ahead and test our application node server we'll go here uh, localhost 8080 and you'll, what you'll see here is a user has connected down in here in our PowerShell so that means that the IO has uh, made a event and a connection event we've connected to the server and its output a user has connected now if I refresh this it'll say a user has disconnected the event was sent to the server that we have left uh, the client is disconnected and then of course it reconnected because of the refresh so a user is disconnected and then the user is reconnected if we just go ahead and exit out of the tab you'll see a user has disconnected so let's go ahead and go back to our controller here and we're going to create a new variable called scope dot messages and it's going to initially start off as an empty array um, and then what we're going to do is our chat socket on and then the event is going to be a message when we get a message from the server go ahead and tank the function uh, or the function will have data in it and what we want to do is we want to push that data into our messages so scope dot message messages um, dot push and then let's do uh, data it'll be data dot message and then we can go down to where this controller actually has the partial here uh, our daily dose partial and we're just going to do uh, messages so let's save that okay so let's go back to our server dot ejs or js file we're gonna create a new variable and call it i and set it equal to zero and then we're gonna test our uh, communication by emitting a message over and over and over and over again uh, just increasing the number uh, so we'll do a set interval and it's gonna be a function uh, that repeats over and over and we're going to do socket dot emit and the event is going to be message like we set up previously the data included in it is going to be message and then the message will be I we'll just set that there now what we're going to do is increase I and then down here we'll say just repeat that every 1000 milliseconds and we'll save that so let's go ahead and start our server up. So node server. We'll go to our local host here. And you'll see we got a user connected. And then now all, we are getting messages in real time from our server just counting up. So this is a continuous, a continuous deal. It'll just count, keep counting. Um, of course, we can see that uh, the server is sending a message on a loop every 1,000 seconds or 1,000 milliseconds, and then the controller is saying anytime it receives a message to go ahead and push that message 
uh, to our array of messages here and then it updates it automatically so that's basically basic communication between the server uh, angular and using socket io i hope you guys learned something if you have any questions comments or concerns go ahead and post them down uh, in the comment section uh, if you like this tutorial you want to see more uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button i'd greatly appreciate it and i'll catch you guys next time thanks for watching